Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion from the Book of Common Prayer. Today we are using the propers for George Augustus Selwyn. Our service begins on page 67. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have mercy upon us, us and, and right both these thy laws in our hearts we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, hear our prayers and supplications as we remember your servant, George Augustus Selwyn, and enrich your church in every land with the manifold gifts of service, that by constant witness and selfless devotion, we may share with one another and with all the world the immeasurable wealth of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. Uh, the lesson today is from Corinth Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 13. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit... And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through this Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, 
to another the, the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, through many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Here ends the lesson. The Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning to read at the 7th verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, thee, O Lord. As you, pro as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for a reading from Stephen Reynolds for All the Saints concerning Selwyn. George Augustus Selwyn became the first bishop of New Zealand in 1841, and over the next 26 years built up a self-governing church in which Europeans and Maori natives had equal say. It worked very hard to make the English colonists recognize the rights and human dignity of the Maoris, but his pleas and warnings were largely ignored, and three up Maori uprisings were the result. In 1867, Selwyn retired from New Zealand and became Bishop of Lichfield in the Diocese of the Industrial Midlands in England. He organized local synods so that lay people might have a share in making diocesan policies and started a special ministry to minors, itinerant workers, and the homeless poor. He died in Lichfield on this day in the year 1878. Selwyn possessed wide human sympathies and a gift for getting things done in a way that included as many people as possible. This was reflected in his constant conviction that the church was best governed through synods and his example both in New Zealand and in Litchfield has had a great influence throughout the Anglican community. God bless him. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All, All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we have been bid to pray for the ministries of the parish of Christ Church Dartmouth and the parish of the Church of St. Andrew Cole Harbor. And we especially pray at this time for their rector and our archdeacon, Catherine Borbonier, as she begins a time of sabbatical. In prayer partnership, we pray for the parish of St. Andrew's Church, Locks Road, Dartmouth. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. We pray for conflicts to cease throughout the world, remembering especially the conflicts between Hamas and Israel, 
Russia and Ukraine and within the Sudan. We pray for missionaries at home and abroad and all those who are doing the work of discernment in this parish. We pray for Margaret Williams as she concludes her time with the Connectors 5 missional cohort and is currently looking after family needs. And for all those who are accompanying her on this journey, we pray especially for recovery and wellness. For Jacqueline as she continues to train as an associate parish priest, for Marilyn Newport as she discerns becoming an oblate with the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine, and for all those who are planning to attend the Vital Church Maritimes Conference as part of St. Luke's team. Let us remember before God those of our brothers, sisters, and siblings who have departed this life and are at rest, praying especially for the late Dorothy Power. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon her. And let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church Militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Charles, our king, and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servants, Sandra, our diocesan, David, our metropolitan, Chris, our national indigenous, Linda, our primate, Justin of Canterbury, our bishops, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, and especially those for whom our prayers are desired. Anne-Marie, Barb, Carl, Carolyn, Chris, Dawn, Evelyn, Jim, Karen, Linda, Lisa, Miga, Michael, Roy, Stan, Valerie. And for all those we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For Marilyn Scott's request to pray for the repose of the soul of Michael and those who grieve his passing. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly <coughs> kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort 
and make your humble confessions to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant us that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with us, sir. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is the one that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as ye shall eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in the sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. We pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with this most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. In the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. For announcements, uh, just a reminder that the Vital Church Maritimes <coughs> Conference is open for registration, and you can find that link on the diocesan website, or if you need help, contact our office, and we'll get that information for you. It is in person in Truro in May, uh, but it's also available on Zoom if you prefer to stay home. The um, little bit of homework I just read about was that we uh, are asked to think about our parish and when it was the most missional through its history and what was happening. So right back to the time of founding through to today. So if anyone has any kind of insight, input into what you think um, our, would be a correct answer of when our church was the most missional, love to share it so our team of folks can hear about it. Um, for those who might be newer, we had a very interesting start. Um, we celebrated our 75th anniversary last year with um, a reminder that this church actually started in a building that was a converted hen house, a poultry barn, uh, just down the road, ironically, where the Kentucky Fried Chicken is now. <laughs> uh, and from that, after the war, it grew very rapidly, uh, having um, built um, from there, having to move to the school, then built a, a church in the back here, and then Oak grew that one and built this one, and all of that growth happened within 10 to 12 years. It was uh, a very rapid time of development uh, with the baby boom. So the question, though, isn't necessarily about the church growing. It's about missional activity. So when were we doing the most missional activity? Uh, other things to announce, a reminder that the next flea market is Saturday, April 20th, and I do ask your prayers this week for the marriage success program for the region that's happening, and that's this Saturday, so if you can think on Saturday to remember the 
uh, couples who are getting married in your prayers and those who are participating in the program, some of whom are already married and some of whom are the facilitators, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Are there any other announcements? I think Marilyn did say that the newest editions of Forward by Day by Day are available. Those are the ones that cost $2, and there is a free booklet on the minor prophets available at the back of the church if anyone wants one. Nothing else? All right. The liturgy has ended. Now the service begins. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.